My name is Kay Schwartz and I'm Executive Director of the Flint Public Library in Flint, Michigan. Once we decided that the only way forward for the Flint Public Library was to uh, make a commitment to this building and renovate it completely. Um, we uh, were looking for a way to make a plan and find out how much that was going to cost and then find ways to fund it. We went into a uh, design process with a design committee comprised of um, library board, library staff, um, community members, and we spent the last half of 2017 imagining what this building could be, could do for the community, and designing it, and then finding out how much that was going to cost. So by January of 2018, we actually had a design and a cost of $27.6 million, and then we had to spend some time figuring out how we were going to put that funding package together. So that was 2018 and the better part of 2019 before we were able to actually um, figure out the pieces of the funding and ask the people that could help us for help. The um, pan worldwide pandemic really put a wrench in supply chains for all kinds of things that we needed. For example, glass. Uh, we had our windows, but there's a lot of glass inside this building as well. We have glass uh, stairwell, stairways. And so um, uh, there were many things that couldn't be done till other things were done. So it's, it's a chain that has to happen in a certain order. And if one of the things gets stuck, then you have a delay. We had ambitions to open earlier. But realistically, this opening day in May was the, was the first that was uh, where we felt like the building was finished enough that the public would really see what they're getting and be able to use it. Um, we are not finished. We have lots of technologies and systems that have only been in place for a few weeks and some a few days. So um, we're still learning the building and learning how to run it, and I think Probably by when we get to the end of the summer, we'll pretty well have have most of our systems uh, learned, and the and the staff will feel really comfortable um, telling the public about how to use everything that we have. So we intentionally created a lot of spaces, different kinds of spaces, so people could use them in ways that we don't even know what they might do yet. You know, I think one of the things that we love about Flint and love about this library is that you never know who's going to walk in the door next. And this is such a, a broad mix of people of all different income levels, education levels, ages, um, and backgrounds that it's, it's probably the place in the community that attracts the most variety of different kinds of people. So we tried to make something, uh, we've tried to make place where um, everybody could find a place that was comfortable for them or interesting to them or helpful to them. So we've got uh, study rooms that seat four people. We've got meeting rooms that seat six to eight people. We've got a, kind of a board room that has 12 seats, uh, a really cool floating sky salon lounge that has seven seats uh, in uh, lounge type seating. Um, and the architects uh, made great use of our windows. So we have now windows on four sides of the building. And the entire first and second floor are public space, which was not the case before. There was a lot of staff space taken up and now the staff is all in the lower level so the first and second floor every single window is available to the public it's either in a meeting room or it's in a seating area in order to do that they pulled the collections in from the windows so the books are in the center and if you walk the perimeter you're gonna find a seating area that where you can you can shop for a chair that's comfortable to you and a, a, a direction of the light that's comfortable to you and hopefully find for you or you and the people you brought with you a great place to, to sit and relax and talk. One of our um, 
strategic priorities for our community is digital learning. Um, and I think it's, we're a little bit out ahead of the community in some ways on that. Um, I don't know that everybody's really embraced the understanding of to what extent jobs of the future are dependent upon being really, really good with uh, computers and digital assets. So, um, so we've dedicated a whole quadrant of the library here to as a digital learning center. And um, part of that is a digital studio for podcasting or green screen filming. Um, that's not open yet because we're just learning how to use it, but it'll open in July this year. We've always had adult computing. There are many people who can't afford high-speed internet access in their home or a computer, and yet they need access for doing so many things that are just absolutely necessary in your daily life. So we've already always provided that, and so if you need to use a computer, you sit in the adult computing area and you can get some help, that's great. But we also recognize that somebody might want to borrow a computer from us and sit in a meeting room or sit in a comfortable chair overlooking the beautiful front lawn on Kersley Street, which you can now do. So we have, we're trying an innovative thing called a laptop for in-library use checkout. So there's actually a kiosk where you can go and with your library card, check out a laptop uh, for two hours and take it anywhere in the library to use it. So um, you may not own a computer, but you need to have a Zoom meeting. You can check a laptop out of the kiosk and go into a meeting room that you've reserved and run a Zoom meeting. We're trying to, trying to make sure that everybody of every station in life, no matter their means, has really good access to the, to the resources that we offer here at the library. Another one of our strategic priorities besides digital learning is early childhood literacy. And the third, by the way, is being a community hub and the completion of this building fulfills that, that uh, goal. One of the main reasons we knew we needed to renovate this building was we needed more space for children. The children's room as it was was about 3,300 square feet and we knew we needed at least twice that. So by changing where the children's room was in the library building, we, more, we were more than able to double the space there. And we've made it a really um, play to learn center. Uh, we had taken a little step toward that in our um, previous library uh, by bringing in a, what we call our tinker table, which was a building toy with Duplos, tinker, ta tinker toys, and magna blocks, and light tables, and so on. Kids loved it, it made an enormous difference. Families and kids spent more time, went home with more books because we were able to provide some entertainment while they were there. The children's learning place now uh, has many things. So we, for the first time, we actually have a story time room and a program room where you can actually close the doors if you want to and be as loud as you want during story time. Um, we used to do story time between two bookshelves before. Um, and uh, when you go around the perimeter of the room, we have a, an ever bright light board, which is the coolest thing ever. And I've lost more adults on tours by just, they can't get away from it. It's like a light bright that you don't have to pull the pegs out. You just twist a dial to make the colors fun. Um, when you walk down the hallway there, you'll see actually a snack room where it's legal to eat in the library. So all those little bags of goldfish and juice boxes that people had to try to sneak to their kids, now there's a place they can actually go and eat that, you know, and then come back to play. Um, three little individual bathrooms for the children in, their, in that room. An aquarium that they can, kids can get up close and personal to. Uh, we know we're gonna be wiping nose prints and hand prints off that all day, but that's great. Uh, and then there's a whole area where that tinker table we had before is there. We also have room now to put up our little toy kitchen, our little tool bench, puppet theater, different things, our dollies, and we can swap them in and out. So it's like a little mini children's museum, you know, play to learn place. It's gonna be, I think, really well used and 
um, an opportunity for families to come and comfy seating for parents. Uh, for almost 60 years, parents were sitting on the little miniature wooden chairs. And now, man, they're sitting, sitting in some really beautiful, comfortable seating. So we expect to see a lot of families come and sit, spend a lot of time and hopefully go home with big piles of books that they read and bring back next week and get more. This building is really interesting because in 1958, it was built with more windows than any other building on the, in the Cultural Center campus. Um, they had, of course, become very energy inefficient because they were 1958 windows, you know, so, uh, but, um, you know, we love the windows and the light. And so um, when we opened in 1958, there was quite a few staff people working in the lower level. So the architect made provisions that that lower level would have natural light, you know, half windows with natural light. So on two sides of the building, there's a slope down to the lower level. But on the east side of the building, there wasn't enough property line to make a slope. So they dug what we used to call the pit. Now we call it the courtyard because it's really dressed up now. So when they made more windows for us on that east side, that big cement wall, 100 foot long cement wall was visible. We said, well, that looks like a mural wall to us. So we partnered with the Flint Public Art Project, uh, Joe Scapani and his group, and we said, we want a local artist. Um, they connected us up with Kevin Burdick, who goes by Scraps, and we were able to um, brainstorm uh, a lot of ideas and then leave the artist alone and let him you know bring those ideas to life and so it's kind of a collage because it's kind of all the things that our planning team could think about of what what you can get from libraries and books and so on and so it's uh, visible from um, uh, all the store uh, the two first and second floor and the lower level of the library and um, it's also, you can view it from outside as well by peeking in uh, over the walls. So we're thrilled to have that, and we're told that it'll last a long time. Um, the kind of paint they use now is long lasting, so we're hoping to enjoy it for many years to come. It's our greatest hope that the successful completion of this project will inspire people to successfully compete a complete a project across the parking lot from us and figure out a great and wonderful use for the Central High School and the Whittier High School property. If you stand in our lobby and look out the south door, or if you stand on the second floor and look down, you will see that we have built a sidewalk, a wide sidewalk across our parking lot straight over to Central High School. And we are very much hoping that this project may inspire another project that will bring students across that sidewalk back into our building again, as they did before June of 2009 when that school closed. We have been working on a, a library renovation in the thought process stage for about seven years. And so this is the day when all the thinking, planning, working, and designing and constructing uh, came to fruition and we were actually able to uh, have a ribbon cutting and a grand opening and welcome people back into the Flint Public Library. It feels like the end of one incredible journey and the beginning of a new one um, because there are so many interesting spaces in this building that we're providing to our community and to a great extent, we don't know all of the things that they're going to think of to do with these spaces. This is a communal space, and it's going to be available for the things people can dream up to do here. All right, I'm ready when you are. One, two, three. <laughs>